Next one, UAE's news that is on the international circuit. Not This will not be put in uh, the local uh, publishing media houses. The first one is UAE is withdrawing from the Yemen war. This is New York Times. Four years after UAE moved to support Saudi in a war that uh, to attack Yemen to prevent democracy and to prevent it moving to the other uh, part of uh, the Muslim, you know, Shia, Sunni kind of war stuff. So it seems that um, uh, now UAE wants to withdraw because it's proving to be very expensive for them. It's proving to be detrimental and uh, um, the international community, including United States, they are, um, you know, they are speaking against UAE, and especially UAE has Expo 2020 that's coming. It's giving a lot of negative press, a lot of negative publicity. Expatriates are not coming there. There's a threat to Gulf War, and especially with the escalation that has taken place between Iran and USA, uh, UAE found out they have made a very big mistake by involving themselves in the Yemeni war, so they are withdrawing. Because of which, the next news that is from Al Jazeera says that because UAE is withdrawing, Saudi is now pushing in more troops to secure the Yemeni ports because if UAE withdraws, then Yemenis become stronger, so they don't want this to happen. So Saudis are increasing their number of troops, increasing their presence uh, because they also have a fear that if Iran supports the um, Iran supports the Yemeni forces, then all the effort that was put by Saudi and UAE will go to waste. Okay. However, the reputation of uh, UAE is really in uh, you know it's it's pretty shaky because. It seems now a lot of U.S. Uh, senators are speaking against uh, UAE, especially if you see human rights, human rights, the website, go to their website. You'll see that Amnesty International last year said the human rights abuses, torture camps, war crimes and support of Al-Qaeda kind of groups in Yemen have severely damaged UAE standing with the U.S. Uh, increasing regional differences with uh, Iran has also helped um complications the rising tension between us and iran has put uae in a terrible crossroad and you need to understand uh, when you have news like raping of children raping of innocent women uh, torturing uh, men uh, who have nothing got to do with the war that is destroying uae's image as being you know a country that did not get into any political problems um uh, speaking about us not supporting uae um this is from the Washington Post, which says that uh, the title itself is how the UAE contributed to the mess uh, of the Middle East. It seems uh, that um, Senator Robert Mendez uh, from New Jersey is a ranking Democrat in the Foreign Relations Committee. He sent a letter to Mike Pompeo of uh, United States warning the United States that it may be obligated by law, by law. Okay, even if they want, that means by law you cannot, to terminate all arms sales with UAE. Um, it comes at a time when um, UAE is undergoing all the tension and problems. Mendez's query follows revelations uh, that high tech US anti tank missiles, which were sold to the UAE, have ended up with Libyan armed forces. Now, why is that a problem? It's because Libyan armed forces are trying to overthrow the United States government in a uh, supported government in Tripoli. So UAE is, USA is supporting UAE, supplying it arms, but UAE is supplying arms to Libya and Libya is attacking the US. So there's a conflict of interest because of which now US senators are saying, stop supplying stuff to UAE, stop supporting the UAE. And obviously when they stop supplying arms, money stops coming in. United States is a country whereby if money stops coming in, you're not my friend. Uh, because of UAE supplying these weapons, it seems uh, that uh, at least 53 uh, US uh, forces were killed. In 2014, Pentagon said that the UAE had secretly bombed Libya, much to the surprise of US officials. UAE now stands accused of supplying Al-Qaeda militants in Yemen with US-made weapons which were supplied to it out of trust. And it has been violating its um, its stance, especially repressing pro-democratic forces in Sudan. Uh, remember this much that UAE does not support democracy in uh, these Arab countries, which I totally understand. Because if you do give power into the hands of these 
lunatic people. They are going to make the country a mess. You don't need any proof. Just look at what has happened with Iraq. When Iraq was under Saddam Hussein, it was under law and order. Now it's totally destroyed. Look what has happened to Syria. Wherever U.S. goes, it destroys those countries. Now, all this is affecting UAE. And uh, because of which, it seems that the uh, U.S. has started, uh, relationship with UAE has started to strain itself, which is why U.S. started the withdrawal of troops. Um, this is a report. And the next one is a report by Al Jazeera and uh, um, the Human Rights Watch. It says that um, UAE has violated the uh, rule of law, okay, with brazen contempt. UAE is holding five prisoners after they have completed their prison sentence. The Human Rights Watch said that these five men uh, who are at a counseling center at Al Razin prison, who are all over on accusations of posing a terrorist threat. The five individuals are Khalifa al Rabian, Uthman al Seni, Badr al Buheri, Ahmed al Mullah, um, four activists who are related to al Ish Islah, okay, a registered Islamic movement which has been banned in UAE. Now, this I, I feel is, even though it's only five people, I feel it's been brought up right in the front because of the tensions between U, um, UAE and Qatar, because of the tensions between UAE and Iran. You, you know, see, the thing is, once you start making enemies, they will highlight whatever you do, you know, 10 times, 20 times. So UAE is being put in the spotlight and uh, Human Rights Watch, they are supposed to highlight anyone who violates and UAE is now being put right at the center of the spotlight in a negative way, which is going to affect it pretty badly. Talking of bad publicity, EmiratesLeak.com, which shares all the controversial stuff of UAE, claims uh, on July 11th that Emirates launched a satellite into space and that crashed. Now, this was the news that everyone was talking about that. Yes, oh, okay, fine. They try to move towards space and it crashed and that's, you know, they're moving towards the moon or Mars or whatever. But Emirates Leak is saying that the satellite that was sent into space is not a normal satellite. It's a spy satellite and it was going to be used for espionage purpose. And this is the one that crashed. It was launched. Uh, it was being launched from a Vega rocket in France on Thursday. And it was supposed to put Falcon I-1 surveillance um, satellite into orbit. Uh, this would be used as a fourth satellite to monitor uh, people in the UAE, uh, the number of satellites that they have in mind is 10. It's expected to reach to 12 by 2020. And what are these satellites being used for? It's to spy on citizens, on human rights activists, on intellects and media people, and also on neighboring regions. Um, proof of this has been Reuters expose that has shown that UAE has teamed up with Israel in hacking into high phones, hacking into Android systems, uh, and they've done it successfully, okay? Uh, they can hack into any um, smartphone device, especially why do you think that now they are giving you free SIM cards? Why do you think they are telling you download the software? Uh, because when you download a software, you're actually downloading their technology onto your device. And this, if it starts installing, finish, that's about it. Once you give permission, all your data can be scanned by them. So they've been spying on citizens, opponents, even friends. Uh, as for this support, the current uh, ruler of Abu Dhabi has been uh, dealing with a lot of, even Israel, which is supposed to be the enemy of all Arab states, uh, to spy traditionally or in the technology age. And uh, they have done this on almost everyone possible. However, do not get paranoid. If you're watching porn, if you're sending some forwards, if you're liking some videos, they're going to arrest you. They're going to uh, keep an eye only on those people who offer a threat to national security. So don't get paranoid. At the same time, do not write anything negative about the ruling family, about Islam. As long as you don't do that, you're fine. Okay, so don't panic and say, oh, my phone is going to be, you know, hacked. <laughs>